Next on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Brian O'Neill. In for Dr. Gary Ostrauer this week is Alfred University uh, College President Dr. Mark Zupan. Dr. Zupan, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to join you, Brian. Well, I, this is a very interesting article. Uh, came out in March. The article is called, Will Clay Christensen Put His Money Where His Mouth Is? And uh, summing up the article, what it says is, is a college uh, professor at Harvard University uh, predicted in a 2011 uh, book called The Innovative University that half American nonprofit private colleges would close within uh, 10 to 15 years. And uh, that's uh, the, the uh, big question for, from Dr. Zupan is where's all these colleges that are supposed to have closed? And it's a, it's a great question. And the, his prediction was actually for all traditional colleges and universities, non-profit, either public or private. Uh, Clayton Christensen, who's the leading expert on disruptive innovation at the Harvard Business School, doubled down on that prediction about a year ago, saying basically within the next 10 years. And his leading hypothesis is because of uh, online education. And um, since the initial prediction, while there have been a few more closures nationally, particularly in New England, it's nowhere near the rate that would get it to half by the year 2030. So decided to issue a bet to friendly wager to him of a million dollars that if he's right and by 2030 if half of us are closed or merged, would personally contribute a million to his Institute on Disruption, provided it's still around by then. And then if he's wrong, then he has to contribute a million dollars to Alfred University's endowment. And since the story appeared in the Democrat Chronicle in Rochester and then an inside higher ed, have yet to hear from him. So, uh, so far, uh, still hoping to hear from him. And, uh, and it, it, there have been similar predictions historically when radio came around. Hey, we deal with that right now, uh, Dr. Zupan. We've got... Uh... We've got promos that run on this station about how people have been predicting since, oh, the invention of television, and now in today's world they predicted with every new cell phone that comes out that that's the end of radio. Radio is uh, on the uh, last days, and uh, really it's not true, and I'm sure it's not true for schools either. If these new technologies are more complements has been the history than substitute so traditional universities like radio stations have figured out how do we how do we uh, adapt to these technologies and use them uh, in terms of compliments in the 30s when people were predicting with radios that there'd just be one history professor at Princeton and the people like Gary Ostrow at Al Alfred University would be out of jobs and Gary's now been teaching for us 50 years uh, thank you and doing quite well isn't he interesting? I don't know if you ever get to catch the shows that he's on, but uh, we get a lot of compliments, and uh, his his sense of history is just uh, terrific. I mean, I, I go to the This Day in History page on the History Channel's website or other history pages online, and just about anything I throw at him, you know, I, I, I'm never able to stump him. He will make you think, no matter the topic, and uh, just... Uh so committed to the student experience, uh, uh, has uh, the same passion that uh, when he was a student with us and, uh, and then first faculty member 50 years ago. So we feel very fortunate that we were able to celebrate his half century of accomplishments and contributions at our recent reunion last month. Now, um, you, uh, you talked in this uh, Democrat and, uh, Chronicle article about... Uh, well, you referenced uh, some of the major accomplishments from uh, Alfred University uh, graduates uh, developing ways to transmit voice and data by fiber optic cable. 
uh, glasses that uh, correct people who have problems with uh, color blindness. Uh, contributing to devising a treatment for needle needle. Yeah, yeah, I think you mentioned that, but you know, so many, so many uh, amazing accomplishments from uh, Alfred University grads. I just listed a few. I'm sure you you know a lot more. We're talking with uh, Dr. Mark Zupan. Dr. Zupan, uh, can you tell us about the Common Ground Initiative? This started last spring, and uh, we had had several alumna put together a panel called Against Our Will in the wake of the Me Too movement. And each of them had at some point in their careers experienced uh, some forms of sexual harassment, sexual violence, so that they designed this panel to help educate the current student body. And it was striking to see how much of the audience was female. Ninety uh, percent, only ten percent of us were male. And was talking to my younger son in the wake of that panel, and he'd been through some sustained dialogues at his college. And it was a voluntary participation. And he noted that uh, uh, too often we end up preaching to the choir where it's voluntary program. So what we did last fall was uh, scrambled up the entire entering undergrad class, first year some transfers, groups of 18 facilitated by a faculty staff member. We had three deans as facilitators, two vice presidents. I got to facilitate a dialogue as well. And we scrambled the group by every aspect we could find, race, gender, ethnicity, um, nationality, uh, geographic origin in the United States curricular interests, co-curricular interests, there were two objectives. Number one, how do we better respect the differences and the perspectives we bring to the equation? We split the Republican, Democrat, Independent uh, fairly evenly. Um, and number two, how do we, uh, what common values are we going to commit to living by as citizens of Alfred University? Uh, things that, uh, values that five, ten years from now we could take out of the time capsule and review in terms of to what extent did we live these successfully, where did we fall down, where do we need to recommit. And last year was not for credit. Uh, this spring, our faculty voted uh, to make it a one-credit-bearing course that will start at the end of August with our incoming class, so it will be a hardwired part of the Alfred University DNA. The inclusivity and the commitment to diversity has been there since our get-go in 1836, but this will help amplify it. Uh, our first class had 22 women, 14 men, and we're the, we're the first place to be fully open to women, even though Oberlin gets the credit for being the first to admit females there. You had to study a field like home economics, and you also were restricted from giving public talks if, we were, if you were female. In our case, it was open access across the board, and Common Ground builds on that uh, proud tradition. How about the uh, the Apex program at Alfred University? That's something new as of this year, too, and a trustee, uh, Michelle Cohen, and her husband gave a lead gift. There, this, ac this past academic year and this new one, a student can apply for a $1,000 grant to do a study abroad, a co-op, an internship, a service learning opportunity. And our aim with the Apex program, it stands for Applied Experiential Learning, is to provide experiences that go beyond what's covered in the classroom. Wall Street Journal study indicates that the best predictor of future professional success is the more of these practical experiences you've had. Uh, we've long also had uh, maker culture at Alfred University, whether it's the foundations course in our top 10 school of art and design that uh, takes students in, in, that, in that discipline through all the different media that artists and designers use, to the MUD lab um, in our Inamori School of Engineering, where you learn the properties of different composites, uh, uh, how much uh, heat that they, how much power that they can convey, how resistant they are, or ability to transmit uh, electric power. So uh, we're building on that tradition. Our A, and by next, the following academic year, it'll grow to $2,000 a year. We're aiming to be the first place to ensure that every student has an APEX experience and that we provide funding for the students to be able to pursue those applied experiential learning experiences. And, 
and we're very grateful to our trustees and alumni and friends. The initial gift was for half a million from Michelle Cohen. We've since had at least that much uh, contributed philanthropically to build the Apex program. Just like in Common Ground, our trustees committed 100000 uh, toward the initial year. We've since raised at least that amount from other alums and friends in support of building the endowment for the program. And, and what, our chair of the board hails from Cornell, Greg Connors, and has led the effort to build Common Ground. Talking to uh, Alfred University uh, President uh, Mark, Dr. Mark Zupan. Uh, Dr. Zupan, I see that um, on the uh, Alfred uh, events calendar you have going on uh, all week an interesting uh, ceramics display. Am I pronouncing it right to say the kilns, K-I-L-N-S, the kilns of Alfred? Is that the pronunciation? Yes, it is, and it's uh, on at our Alfred Cartney's that just opened a couple years ago. It taps into the rich history of artists that we have in Alfred and the surrounding community and the well worth the trip. Also coming up um, this month, July 7th to 13th, it's the sixth annual Most Arts Festival, a cornucopia of uh, creative writing classes, raku pottery, harp playing, um, playwriting uh, exercises, a young pianist competition, pop-up restaurants. So well worth checking that out on the website. It's now the one of the 20 um, uh, uh, best-drawing festivals in upstate New York. Lisa Lance, our performing arts set, is the maestro behind that. And we'll be unveiling the uh, prominent sculpture in front of our Alfred uh, Ceramic Art Museum on July 20th, uh, 10th by Eva Hill. Uh, she'll be there. We expect Marlon Miller, our recent two-time honorary degree recipient, the uh, most significant donor in our university's history, to also be there for the occasion. So check it out on the website. And uh, for educators from the area that would like to find out more and perhaps recommend students to our university, we're happy to supply three tickets so they can uh, find out more as a high school coach, uh, teacher, or counselor, and they can email me at zupan at alfred.edu. Uh, so we can get them uh, some tickets to attend, complimentary tickets. Yes, uh, it sounds like it's going to be a great program. Uh, lots of great music there. Talking to Dr. Mark Zupan. Um, Dr. Zupan, can you tell us about the uh, visa program at Alfred University? It stands for Volunteers in Support of Alfred. Uh, it was initiated by our enrollment management head, Brian Dalton, and uh, it draws alumni, faculty, staff, key influencers, even current students who are interested in recommending prospective students for admission. And if they recommend a prospective student and he or she ends up matriculating, in addition to the standard financial aid package, we'll award an additional $1,000 uh, per year for up to four years to the matriculated students. So alums and friends that would like to participate, again, shoot me an email to zupan at alfred.edu or dalton at alfred.edu, who's uh, the uh, vice president of the Goldman Management. We'll get you signed up. Through the program, you can also volunteer to mentor uh, current students. Um, and uh, it's always uh, the deeper uh, the pool of uh, talented professionals that our students could uh, learn from. It, it makes for a, a, a richer experience uh, and greater professional success long run. Talking to Dr. Mark Zupan, who's uh, the Alfred University president. Uh, Going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in just a moment and continue our uh, interesting conversation about AU. Stay with us. If you own your own business and need garbage removal, contact Lippincott's. And if you live in a town where you have to take care of your own garbage removal, contact Lippincott's. If you need garbage dumpsters, Lippincott's rents them, and Lippincott's can come pick up the garbage too. These days, you don't throw old electronic items in the trash, and Lippincott's can remove your old electronics. Lippincott's, for garbage removal, recycling, hauling, removal of asbestos, or electronic items. For a free quote, visit LippincottsRubbishInc.com, LippincottsRubbishInc.com. Checking in now with meteorologist Rob Carroll. And Rob, how's the fourth looking? 
Not too bad, Brian. Uh, the big issue, I think, will be the uh, potential for a little bit of shower and thunderstorm activity the afternoon and the evening of the 4th, uh, which may uh, cause some problems for some of the local community's fireworks displays. But all in all, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, some very typical July weather coming up the next couple of days. We've got a very weak frontal system trying to press southward through the area this morning. It's having limited success. It's got a fair amount of cloudiness associated with it, Brian. We're also seeing a couple of showers out there. Here and there, there'll be a few peaks of, sun of sunshine through the clouds today. Temperatures are up to 80 to 85, but watch for a shower or two this morning and again some showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. Sunrise this morning was at 539. The sun will set tonight at 851. Now tonight we may have a couple of showers across the area, otherwise we're partly to mostly cloudy at 65. Tomorrow turns partly sunny with the chance of a shower. It's hot, it's humid, 85 to 90. We'll have partial sun on Thursday with the chance of a shower or thunderstorm. Highs in the 4th, Brian, 85 to 90 degrees. Talking to uh, Alfred University uh, College President uh, Dr. Mark Zupan. We've been talking about Alfred University, but don't take our word for it. You can uh, hear great things about Alfred from the Brookings Institute, U.S. News World Report, uh, Forbes, Princeton Review, uh, Value Colleges. The list goes on and on. Uh, that's got to be a nice feeling, Dr. Zupan, to... Uh, to uh, get mentioned by uh, all these uh, big magazines and uh, publications. The, it is, Brian. The Brookings Institution study a few years ago, uh, we stood out there for long-run professional achievements, looking at graduates 10 years out, the value added of the degree, and Brookings ends up calling it the X factor because they couldn't necessarily attribute it to any particular reason. Uh, but uh, the value added with the university degree was what Yale and Tartan. So you've, you've heard that uh, the, the AU degree can be just as useful as one from one of the big New England Ivy League schools, Dr. Zupan. That's right, Brian. At least when it comes to gauging long-run professional success, success and that's where the Brookings Institution attributed to this X factor that they couldn't quite uh, put a finger what was driving it. My own experience three years in as president, uh, there's no place I've been where so consistently the alums will say somebody took an interest in me at Alfred University as a student, either a faculty, staff member, sometimes a fellow student, and that made all the difference to me. So it's a highly personalized environment, a small, intimate setting, but a lot of diversity at the place, a top 10 school of art and design, a top 50 uh, rated by U.S. News and World Report material science program in our Inamori School of Engineering, the top ceramic engineering program there, the top the only Ph.D. program in glass science. Uh, we have 462 alums at Corning Incorporated. They were struck there when they did a census, how we were their leading supplier, and now we're working with them, how do we deepen the pipeline uh, Bill LaCourse, one of our faculty members, was recently quoted on CNN because there's a big issue with smartphones on bendable glass, and Samsung has had some issues. Apple uh, is working with Corning Incorporated. They think that uh, they finally figured out how to make this work for the next gen of smartphones, and our alums, uh, we can confidently say, are in the forefront of developing those uh, bendable glass innovations. Yeah, I think so many people when they think of uh, AU, they uh, they uh, one of the first things that comes to mind is the uh, the ceramics school there, Doctor Zupan. Now, Alfred University, am I correct? It has uh, six undergraduate majors and six graduate majors, and uh, an engineering school uh, where uh, students can. Uh, get a job easily, I'm sure, with uh, their degree there from Alfred University. Uh, we do, and we've just um, announced, uh, starting this fall, we're adding a data analytics minor and restarting our computer science major and minor. By a year from now, we'll have grown a data analytics major, so the students entering this fall will be able to access those during the course of their studies. Uh, data analytics is huge right now. Uh. Yes, and if I could stop you there, Dr. Zupan, for our uh, 
older or less techy listeners, uh, could you give us a little uh, background, a little explanation on uh, data analytics? It's a tra- it's a great question, Brian. It's, it's determining there. It, there's always been a lot of information out there. Uh, I have a friend who said that in its old days when he was on a submarine and uh, uh, the Cold War period between uh, the Soviet Union and the U.S. and uh, sometimes apparently our subs could uh, tap into the cables uh, underneath a particular river in the Soviet Union, and then they had to figure out of all the data being conveyed how to best get uh, the important uh, bits of information, knowledge out of all that data. And nowadays, the richness of the data has increased by several orders of magnitude, even over the past several decades. And how do we make sense of it, whether we're a company uh, marketing to uh, consumers and figuring out what they really want or helping to facilitate searches in the case of a company like Google? Um, knowledge is ultimately power, as the old saying goes. And uh, companies and organizations that can figure out how best to make sense of the information, whether they're nonprofit. Uh, uh, government organizations uh, will be more successful. And uh, let's say at the MBA level last year, 71% of jobs across the United States, according to recruiters, reflected data analytics expertise. Um, we uh, uh, Universities can't produce software coders more quickly enough, so at this is where the facility with computer science, uh, we think, will stand our graduates in good stead. And these, uh, these programs uh, span our College of Business, our Liberal Arts and Sciences School, and our Inamori School of Engineering. So we're, we're trying to promote uh, multidisciplinarity in, uh, in terms of uh, generating greater success for our students. We've been talking to um, Alfred University uh, School President uh, Dr. Mark Zupan. Uh, Dr. Zupan, if we could finish up with... Uh, a little uh, talk about your history program. And uh, now who's running? Uh, Dr. Oster, as you said, it's been there 50 years. Who's in charge of the history department these days at AU? Yeah, the Jeff Slider Beltrano is a key faculty member. Bob Stein, who's one of the co-leaders, uh, also uh, plays a role with our political science department. We've made some recent additions, but uh, Gary is still... Uh, quite active in the program, and uh, we're, uh, we have overlap with our political science group and our social sciences in general. Um, we think the generalist training that a liberal arts and sciences degree provides uh, uh, is very, uh, uh, it prepares our students well for the future. And we're, we're so inc- incredibly, it's one of our fastest growing academic units. Uh, and I think it attests to the commitment our faculty staff have to uh, providing that generalist training and the success that they've had with, with it over the years. If I could read, uh, with your permission, Dr. Zupan, the, uh, one of the uh, reviews of uh, Dr. Gary Ostrauer uh, and what he's like at Alfred University, would that be okay? Of course. It says, Ostrauer changed how I looked at the world. It says that... Uh, He's been teaching for 50-plus years, did a better job at uh, connecting history to modern America than anyone I've ever met. Any negative reviews come from students who wanted an easy A and were bummed that Ostrauer required them to work. Yes, he asked us to read a lot. Yes, he lectures a lot. This is college. You will learn a ton from Dr. Ostrauer. And uh, that's, um, uh, he's taught thousands of students, uh, now alumni, was meeting with one last week who said uh, uh, Gary put the fear of God in him on the first day uh-huh. because he said, if I ever catch you plagiarizing or not attributing uh, something appropriately, I'll hunt you down for the rest of my life. <laughs> and this alum, who's now a prominent uh, uh, commercial real estate individual in the Rochester area said that it bred so much fear in him that when he submitted his first paper in Gary's class, he even thought of footnoting his own name and uh-huh. attributing it to uh, his parents, uh, uh, choosing that uh, first name for him and, and last name. So 
That's uh, great advice from uh, Ostrauer, uh, Dr. Zupan, because in this copy and paste world and in this world where you can do that so easily online, uh, it's important for uh, the students to realize that that is the worst thing they can do, plagiarize. Yeah, and the importance of integrity, and uh, even students will appreciate how much that seed from Gary was hard won and how much they learned along the way, uh, struggling to get that seed. And uh, that, uh, uh, that thirst for curiosity and building resilience uh, stands our graduates in good stead, thanks to Gary. Dr. Zupan, down to the last uh, 30 seconds, was there any, or minute or so, was there anything I left out that uh, you wanted to cover? No, uh, I think we've always covered the ground, but we're always um, interested in the next generation of prospective students. We're going to be doing uh, an extensive array of um, um, more visit days this fall, especially for in individuals interested in uh, STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, um, and uh, mathematics. Um, and our business school recently got rated in the top 100 for the first time ever by U.S. News, which we're very proud of, the youngest and one of the three smallest in the top 100. So being able to marry another degree with the MBA in five years and earn two degrees is something we're touting going forward because that combination we found is also uh, very impactful. Dr. Mark Zupan, the uh, president of Alfred University, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Brian, thanks for the opportunity and uh, best wishes for the rest of the day.